Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. So here's a nice Newton law question. Let's get started. So they tell us that we have a block X of four kilograms. Um, it's hanging connected to block Y as we can see. The system is pulled by a constant force of 180 and then ignore the effects of air resistance. Now, I've noticed that some students get a little bit put off by this word over here. There is nothing that we need to look at with that word. It just says a constant force. So it just means that this force over here is gonna remain 180. What you guys are getting a bit confused about is when they say constant speed or constant velocity. That is when we have to look at something, that is something that's very interesting, and that one means the acceleration is zero. But when they're just saying constant force, you don't have to worry about anything. So we're not gonna say um, acceleration is zero or anything like that. The first question, and this is one of the most popular definitions that they, are, they like to ask out of Newton's laws, is Newton's second law. Now, I've told you guys this before, there are different definitions in each textbook, but there are specific keywords that we need to include in our definition. My advice to you is that you use the one that your teacher has given you, but when you are in matric in grade 12, the memo allows you to have different definitions, but you must have specific keywords that they are looking for. And so here I have put the definition on the screen in yellow. I'll quickly show you if you take the F net equals to MA of Newton's second law and you get the A by itself, it's gonna say F net over M. And so what it actually tells us is that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. So when the mass is at the bottom, that's inversely proportional. When the F net is at the top, that is directly proportional. Question 2.2, draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on object X. Okay, so we draw a little dot. Now, if you look at object X, it's being pulled up by this rope over here, so that's the applied force. Now, some of you might think, hmm, Kevin, do I sort of show it like this, or what am I doing there? Well, remember that in a rope, in a, in a single, or in this one piece of rope, the tension force is the same everywhere. So it's 180 over here, but it's also 180 over here, and it's 180 over here, and it's 180 over here. Yeah, but Kevin, doesn't the pulley change it? Um, yes, in real life, it would make a little bit of difference because there's friction in the pulley, but in grade 11 and grade 12, we ignore that. Okay, so we can just say that there's a tension force of 180 newtons, like that. You could also call it FT if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. Then, of course, there is gravity that is trying to pull this object down, so that's gravity. Some of you might prefer to use W. Now, some of you are gonna be saying, Kevin, is this object over here exerting a force? Well, sort of, but it's it's inside this tension in this, uh, in this rope, so, we can say FT over there. And so those are the only forces acting on that object. Question 2.3.1, calculate the tension and then calculate the acceleration. So if you've watched any of these types of questions with me before, you'll know exactly what I'm about to mention now. I'm about to mention the three step process. Remember, whenever we have two objects connected with a rope, we can solve these types of questions using our three step process. Step one, do a free body diagram on each object. Step two, use F net equals to MA on each object. And then step three, solve. And most of the time, this would end up being simultaneous. And so you know what I normally like to do? I like to divide my page in half, and then I'm gonna take the two objects. So I'll take the four kilogram object over here, and then I'll take the eight kilogram. Doesn't really matter which way you do that. But now what's very important is that we need to have an overall 
direction of what we think the system is going to do. Now, technically, we don't know which direction the system's gonna go. Many of you will say, uh, Kevin, obviously it's gonna go like this. That's not necessarily true because this force might not be strong enough to balance out these weights. It might still be going this way, but we don't know. But what's important is that we just choose a direction. So let's choose that as the positive direction. So that means that the eight kilogram is going upwards and the four kilogram is also going upwards. So let's choose that as our positive direction. And if, if we get negative answers later on, then we know it's the wrong direction. Okay, so what we do now is we, oh, we still have to do a free body diagram. So what forces are acting on the, free, on the four kilogram again? Remember, we already did this one. We said there's 180 Newtons going up, there's gravity, and there is a tension force. So we already did that earlier. Now we're doing the free body diagram on the eight kilogram object, which has gravity, and then it's got the tension force pulling up. Kevin, what about the applied force? No, guys, this applied force is touching the four kilogram object, not the eight kilogram. So we've done step one, which is excellent. Now we move on to step two, where we use F net equals MA on each object. So we say F net equals to MA, and we choose upwards as our positive direction of choice. And now you just go fill in all the forces for F net. So have a look here, we're going, well, all of these forces would be included because we're going in the vertical direction. So you would say 180 minus, because this one's pointing down, and then minus, because this one's also pointing down, FG, Actually, we can work out FG, hey guys? Well, let me first write this down. FG equals to MA. And so we can say 180 minus FT. Now, that's a four kilogram block, so it'll be four times 9.8 for the FG. And then that's equal to its mass times the acceleration, which we don't know. I'm then just gonna simplify this a little bit. So I'm gonna say 180 minus four times 9.8. And so we get 140.8 minus FT equals 4a. Now we can't do anything more. So we move on to the next object. Now remember, we're gonna say F net equals to ma, and it's also going in the upwards direction. So that means this tension force is a positive, whereas this gravity is a negative. So that's gonna be minus Fg, and that's equal to ma. And so we can say Ft minus eight times 9.8, and now the mass is eight and a. I'm just gonna quickly type this part on my calculator. So it'll be FT minus 78.4, like that. Step two is now complete. We've used F net equals to MA on each object. And now the next part is to solve. And it's usually simultaneous. Now there's multiple ways that you can go simultaneous here. But I think the most popular method I've seen, what students like to do, is they take these FTs of here and they try to get those by themselves. So let's start with this one on the left-hand side. We're gonna get the FT by itself. So I'm gonna take the FT over to the right-hand side and then I'm gonna take the 4A to the left, like that. Then I'm gonna do the same for this one. I'm gonna get the FT alone, so it's already positive. So I'm just gonna take the 78.4 over to the other side. Then what students like to do is they take these two and they make them equal to each other. You see, because they're both equal to FT. And so we get 140.8 minus 4A equals to 8A plus 78.4. And then we just solve. So we'll find out that 12A is equal to 62.4, and then if we get A alone, we get 5.2 meters per second, and we can say up. And then to find the tension force, then of course we can just plug that A back over there, for example, or we can even plug it over there. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. And so I'm gonna plug it into this one over here, and so we can say that the tension force is gonna be eight, multiplied by that 
plus 78.4. And if we calculate that, we get 120 newtons. And we, we won't say up or down, although I think in the original question when I had the answer shown, I said 120 up. But we can't say 120 up because for the one object, the tension force is acting down. And for the other one, the tension force is acting up. So that was just a little bit of a mistake on my side. And so the final answer is 120 newtons. And so if we go back to the questions, we should realize that we have now answered the F question and this question. It doesn't matter which order we do it. Um, it depends on how you do your simultaneous setup. All right, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.